Okay, so first of all, let's spend a while here uh, and talk about the interface of Shade. Uh, this will be useful for those who don't really know how to use 3D software or you know have never used any. If you have experience with 3D, if you use applications like Maya or Modo, uh, you probably can skip this chapter because um, Shade is pretty much self-explanatory and you shouldn't have any problems in figuring out what is what. Uh, okay, so first of all, let's take a look at workspaces, which are up here, like layout, where we can uh, use by default, it opens a Shade Explorer from where we can drag and drop elements into our scene. We have a modeling workspace, which uh, basically fills your entire screen Personally, this is where I spend most of my time. This is the way I like the model. We have a split view, which is this classic top, front, right, or left. You can pick anything you want from the list. And a perspective view. We have a UV edit workspace where we can unwrap our models, prepare our UV maps. We have skin, if we intend to do some animation. Here we can assign, uh, once we have our bones, our joints assigned to the model, here we can do the skinning. We have the animation, which basically gives us the motion tab where we can control the flow and speed of the animation. And we have a rendering workspace where we have a preview of our model in perspective and also live preview of, um, of well, the way it would look once it's rendered. Uh, you can change, of course, those, uh, those windows, which is which, right? So uh, this is just the default setting. Now you can enlarge, of course, the windows, change the size by simply dragging the borders or you can also go up here and basically this is for controlling the layout if you have it in the center this is the split view but for example if we want to focus only on perspective on this upper right window and click it it will enlarge it and if you want for example if you want to go back we click like this. Let's say we want to enlarge top and front view. We click here and it will enlarge these two. All right, so you can use this as well. Now, if you like to use split view, but you would like to have more space, well, you can either modify those windows, those tabs on the side, or let's say you have two screens you can grab it and detach it. And then for example, you can put it on the other screen. So you can even have all of those tabs on the other screen, and then you will have this whole space. Let's detach them, right? And then these windows will fill the entire screen. Those, you can position them wherever you want. And if you click on this, little arrows here, it will minimize or maximize or close and open them. And if you want to put them back, you just grab this tab here and drop them back at the edge of the screen, yeah, wherever you want them. You can, you can position them however you want and then change the size. Uh, here, there you go. Okay, let me just grab it here. Here we go. Right, so uh, so these are the. This is our work space basically. Now, what about our tools? Here is a toolbox, where basically we have all our tools used for modeling. 
for creation, modification, and well, additional, first additional things. Here we can create our primitives, surfaces, and meshes, which we will take a look at later on in detail. We can create our lights, many different kinds, our cameras. We have a various options regarding movement and copying. We can create materials, import images and so on. And we have a number of plugins. Uh, Shade uses a, a lot of plugins and scripts and we will take a look at some of them later on as well. Over here, we have uh, a bunch of options, again, for either controlling the layout here, like we've seen a moment ago, or uh, for controlling, for example, selection, where we can choose box, lasso, or trace, where we can choose to uh, repeat the previous action on and on and on until we switch it off, where we can uh, change our manipulator type, we can change our pivot point. Uh, you can we can control our uh, working plane, which we will look at it in a moment as well. We can change the color of our uh, wireframe. We can manually turn on our uh, our shade explorer. We can turn on three D printing assistant if you do. 3D printing, this might come in handy. And we have different options for snapping, for uh, manipulating curves, and so on. We will, uh, we will take a look at some of them when we will talk about the modeling. Over here, uh, we have a browser. So basically this lists all the items in your scene. Plus, uh, you have a bunch of options that you can use on them. Again, we will spend a whole chapter just on browser. And then we have the window here called aggregate, where we basically control everything that is in your scene. So we control cameras. You can control them. You can change the settings. You can create new, memorize their positions, and so on. You control your global light, which is like a default um, directional light, sort of like a sun, where you can control its intensity, uh, level of ambience, color, strength and color of the shadow, its softness, and so on. Uh, here you can also enable uh, uh, the sun and sky, uh, physical sky. You can set the time of day and so on. In the background tab, we control the background for our scene, which can be a number of different things, like cloud, ocean, spotted haze, or image, which uh, I think is the most useful because then we can import the HDR image and use it as an image-based lighting, right? So you will use the uh, image as a light source for your scene. In a surface tab, control your materials, and your surfaces, so you create them and you set all, all those settings here. You import images, normal maps, bump maps, displacements, all this stuff. And we have an info tab, which gives us information about the selected object or objects in our scene. Uh, and also it allows us to control our artificial lights, right? So those lights that you add from here, the global, uh, like I said, the global light is controlled here in the light tab. In the info tab, you control all those artificial lights that you add manually into your scene. And finally, we have tool parameters window, uh, which changes dynamically depending on which tool you have selected and which tool you are using, where you can input various parameters here. And it also is used for conversion because you can convert, for example, primitives into surfaces or surfaces into meshes as you go along, and also for memorizing, uh, which is another, um, another option you can use while modeling. And again, we will look at it later on. 
Okay, so uh, that's basically the brief overview. Uh, once you open the shade for the first time, it will look a little bit different. For example, the colors will be a bit different and the layout might differ a little bit as well because I customize it a bit. And actually we will look at the customize uh, at how to customize in the next chapter.